I took pre Netflix and here's what I learned. It's a six hour long exam, 150 questions. And they say if you score 75 or above, you are guaranteed to pass Netflix. I did my research here and there, read a few articles online and read a couple of forums regarding this and here's what I found. Not everybody who scored a 75 and above on pre Netflix passed Netflix. And not everybody who scored a 75 and less on pre Netflix failed Netflix, which makes it pretty evident that pre Netflix is not the ticket to your lottery. But in my view, it gives you a very good idea of how the exam, the actual exam is going to be structured and takes you out of the idea that there will be easy peasy questions like those in our express exam. Secondly, it makes you know your weaknesses. So it makes you realize what what parts of the exam you need to pay more attention to and what are the areas you're lacking attention in so you can prepare for Netflix better, I would say. So I've spoken to a number of pharmacists and for some the exam, the actual exam which is the Netflix was way harder than the pre Netflix and for some the pre Netflix was way harder than the actual exam. So you know they keep changing the materials and everything and they don't have the same exam for every other person. So yes, I've said this before, I'll say it again, luck plays a big role. Not, I'm not saying that luck is the only thing that matters and just blaming everything on luck, but luck does play a very important role. Yeah, whatever. So here are a couple of things that I noticed in the exam and I would like to share my experience with you all. Number one, the exam was structured pretty different from the questions that you get with the Rx Prep lecture course. So the exam had case studies. Not that the Rx Prep course doesn't have case studies. 90% of the questions you get on the Rx Prep course are the lecture course are case study based, but the exam was more I would say it was a very lengthy course so like it was a page and a half of the case study and then they would ask you a single line question they do have similar kind of questions in the rx prep co lecture course but the but the questions on the actual pre naplex were way lengthier so let's say they are asking you if carbamazepine can be used in this patient and then they have a huge a humongous case presented in front of you and if you go up there and try to read every single line you wouldn't make it in the required time so you have to be very you have to have a very keen knowledge of the drug that is being asked to you to point out that this this patient has hypernatremia and you cannot give him carbamazepine or there were questions like they would give you five six options of um, drugs and these were all brand names mind you and then they would throw a lengthy two pages case in front of you and ask if which drug would be appropriate to use in this patient. So you need to have a very, very strong lack of a very, very strong knowledge of the drug that is being presented to you. Number one, you need to know the brand names at all costs. These were all brand names, mind you. So you need to have a very, very strong knowledge of the brand names. Number one, you need to know all the brand names. Secondly, you need to know the teeny tiny details that are there at the study tip gals and the the study tip guys in the Rx Prep course book because they throw those questions at you in a way that gets you confused no matter how strong your knowledge is or at least it got me confused. Secondly, the questions were too lengthy. So if you are the kind of person who reads the whole case and then goes to the answer choices and then try to answer the question, you are not going to get it in Netflix or maybe at least in in pre Netflix because the questions were very lengthy. I had two or three cases which were approximately three pages. Imagine sitting in the exam room with all that anxiety and stuff around you and then reading a three page long case just to answer a question that you might not even get right. It's a waste of time and it's a waste of energy. So you, again, you need to have a very, very, very strong knowledge of the drug that is being presented to you. Thirdly, a thing that I found giving pre naplex is that it tests you on the knowledge of your labs. So if you know your labs, if you know which drug can be given in hyponatremia, which drug is cleared renally and not hepatically, which drug can cause dial if the patient has a positive Coombs test, which are the ones you sh shouldn't be giving. If you can see the ti tiniest detail of HCG positive or HCG negative, if you can give this particular drug to a pregnant patient, if you're even paying attention that the patient is pregnant, they 
they test you on these teeny tiniest knowledge of the labs and if you know the labs of the drugs and you know the labs if you have a strong knowledge of the labs associated with the drugs you are going to ace right now and lastly the answer choices had more brand names than the than the case itself so it goes like they throw a three page long case to you or maybe a two page long case to you or maybe a one and a half page long case to you and then they ask you about the labs and everything that was confusing already and then they throw like five answer choices and they're all brand names like the case wasn't confusing enough they throw you the brand names now you need to know the the case actually the case that is being presented to you is doesn't have much brand names as compared to the answer choices that are being presented to you and that was the most confusing part for me because i have no matter how much i try to find the brand names but i have a hard time remembering them and i believe that was a point i needed to pay more most attention to the brand names so yes, know your brand names, know the study tip gals that are there in the, uh, that are there in the exam um, course book, know the study tip guys and I would say in my free Netflix not everybody has the same exam but the ones that I took had information that were not part of the underlined information or the study tip gals or the study tip guys in the course book. Now I'm not asking you to memorize the whole, whole course book, it's not, it's not possible, it's not humanly is not possible for any but yes for me it it did have information that was not there underlined it was in it presented in the lecture slides that were provided by the rx prep or it wasn't in the study tip guys or study tip gal maybe it was just me but yes i'm here sharing my experience so if there's anything that you would like to ask don't forget to leave a comment down below and if this video provided you any value don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys again next time